The dark side of Dubai, nobody talks about. What do you think of Dubai? A city of dazzling skyscrapers with breathtaking heights, flashy supercars driven by millionaires, and massive shopping malls that store everything a person could ever want. Yes, that may be your perception, but only if you don't know the actual truth about Dubai that nobody talks about. So do you want to know the dark side of Dubai? Then stay with us on Country Facts. And before we begin, please do subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Dubai, which is on the coast of the Persian Gulf in the eastern part of the Arabian Peninsula, desires to be the business center of Western Asia. It is also a major hub for people and goods around the world. The city, which was already a major center of trade, grew a lot because of the money from oil. Less than 5% of the Emirates' income comes from oil right now. Since the beginning of the 21st century, Dubai has been a hub for regional and international trade. Dubai's economy is based on trade, tourism, aviation, real estate, and financial services. The Emirates, which is short for the United Arab Emirates, is a country in Western Asia. It is at the eastern end of the Arabian Peninsula and has land borders with Oman and Saudi Arabia. It also has sea borders with Qatar and Iran and the Persian Gulf. Abu Dhabi is the country's capital, while Dubai, which has the most people, is a place where people from all over the world meet. The United Arab Emirates is a federation of seven emirates. Abu Dhabi, which is the capital, Ajman, Dubai, Fujairah, Ras al Khaimiya, Sharjah, and Umm al Quwain make up the seven emirates. The population of Dubai had increased to 3,331,420 by September 2019. With 177,020 more people every year, this is a growth rate of 5.64%. As of 2013, only about 15% of the people living in Dubai were Emirati. The rest were foreigners. About 85% of the people who lived there were from other countries. Most of them were from India and Pakistan, but Bangladeshis and Filipinos were also big groups. Over 100,000 British people live in Dubai. They are by far the largest group of Westerners living there. About 27 years old was the middle age in the Emirate. There were about 15.54 births and 1.99 deaths for every 1,000 people in 2014. And what are Dubai's riches? From the 1770s until the late 1930s, the Trucial States, which are now the United Arab Emirates, made most of their money from pearls. Pearl diving was a small way for people in the quiet fishing villages of the Persian Gulf to start making money, but it set the stage for something much bigger. In the late 1950s, Dubai and Abu Dhabi fought over their borders as they looked for oil. As a result, many people left Dubai for other places in the Gulf while Abu Dhabi did well. Sheikh Rashid bin Said Al Maktoum, the leader of Dubai, started investing in infrastructure in 1958. With loans worth tens of billions of dollars, Dubai's first airport opened in 1960. The move away from oil led to a rise in tourism, and the small amount of oil that was found in Dubai in 1966 was used to build the city we know today. Dubai started shipping oil in 1969. In 1971, when it got its independence from Great Britain, it became one of the seven emirates that make up the United Arab Emirates. Dubai was a part of the emirates, but it had a lot of control over its economy. Throughout the 1980s, it continued to find new ways to make money so it could compete with Abu Dhabi's growing oil profits. In 1985, the city made its first free zone called Jafsa, which is the largest in the world. This made the Emirate a big draw for businesses around the world. Today, these businesses take advantage of the Emirate's 30 free zones, which offer tax breaks, lower custom duties, and no rules for foreign owners. Several thousand Jafsa companies make up 20% of foreign investment in Dubai, and the 144,000 people who work there bring in $80 billion in money that doesn't come from oil. That's equal to 21% of the city's gross domestic product. With a GDP per person of $57,744, the UAE is the third richest country in the world after Luxembourg at number two and Qatar at number one. Most of its money comes from making and selling goods and services that have to do with oil, petrochemicals, aluminum, and cement. But these are the facts that we are shown. What about the sides that we are not aware of? Like, yeah, the dark side. Before 30 years ago, Dubai was mostly just a desert. When the United Arab Emirates found oil in 1966, the city's economy took off. This led to a building boom that gave the city the world's tallest building, the world's second largest mall, and one of the world's most luxurious hotels, and more skyscrapers than any city except New York and Hong Kong. 
Dubai looks like a complete success story from the outside, but Dubai may be more of a cautionary tale for people who look at it and wish their country or city could be like it. Hundreds of thousands of migrant workers from places like Nepal, India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, and the Philippines walk on the shiny glass towers every day. Nearly 90% of Dubai's 3.1 million residents are foreigners. Many of them came to work on construction projects or in service jobs. Most come alone because they are told they will make much more money here than in their home countries. This way they can send money to their families. But Dubai and the UAE have had problems with how they treat their workers for a long time. Migrant workers say they often have to work 12-hour or longer shifts in harsh conditions and that their paychecks or passports are often held by their employers so that they can't quit or go home. Also, the average salary of a construction laborer is $7,900 AED. Most of the workers who come to the U.S. are brought there by recruiters or agencies that do the same. Many of these recruiters or agencies make promises about salaries or jobs that are much higher than what the workers actually do. Human Rights Watch has said that the kafala, or visa sponsorship system, is the source of some of the worst abuse. Employers have to pay a fee to sponsor visas for their workers, which they often pass on to the workers. The New York Times found last year that many workers owe money to their employers for the cost of setting up their contracts, visas, and trips to Dubai. Under the kafala system, a worker who leaves her job without permission can be fined, put in jail, or sent home. Because of this, many have few legal options if they end up in a bad situation or one that is different from what the recruiters told them. The director of Human Rights Watch's Middle East and North Africa division, Sarah Leah Whitson, told the New York Times last year that there is a huge reliance on migrant workers who are forced to work under conditions that are the same as indentured servitude. This is a setup that's meant to trap workers. Human Rights Watch and the United Nations have both said in recent reports that there have been some improvements, but that labor abuses are still happening. HRW said that the new laws didn't change the fact that employers could still charge workers recruitment fees that could put them in debt. Most of the workers come on their own because their home countries are poor and they need to make money badly. That makes it even sadder that the way things now seem to be set up is to take advantage of them. When you know how hard it was for migrant workers to build Dubai, which is basically set to give you everything you want if you have the money to pay for it, it's hard to recommend it as a place to spend your vacation money. Human Rights Watch says 88.5% of the UAE's people are foreign workers and that low-paid workers are subjected to abuses that amount to forced labor. There are about 3 million of these kinds of workers in the UAE alone, and 61% of them come from South Asian or African countries. Most of them work in construction, hospitality, or retail, and their passports are usually held by their employers from the time they start working until almost the end of their contract. But what happens to the people who do decide to tell someone? In the UAE, there are many ways to destroy someone's life. In this country, you're guilty until proven innocent, even if you have no proof, not the other way around. Untrustworthy employers know this. If you want to know what happens to your passport when you work in a hotel, then check out this link. So what are your thoughts about Dubai? Let us know in the comment section below. And if you like today's video, then please do check out more videos like this on our channel and subscribe to our channel and hit that like button for more updates. Thanks for watching.